Hi, I'm going to paint this magpie today. I like his stance and he's holding something in his beak there. Um, I've done the drawing onto ash, hot pressed, monkey pounds, cotton rag paper. And before I start painting, I just, I'm looking at the bird and uh, how dark those actual dark passages are under his belly. We know it's white in reality, but there are shadows there. So I'm using this uh, bit of paper with some hole punches in it to just isolate the area. So if you just place the hole over that patch, you can see how dark that really is. But then as it comes to where the shadow turns into the light, you can see that's a lot, that's a lot paler. If I just zoom in on that for you. Let's go back. So that's really dark in there, almost as black as his plumage under his neck. But then as you start travelling across, it gets paler and paler and then eventually you know, you're almost into the white same tone, but not quite as this paper. So that's the main thing I want to bear in mind in order to get the curve feeling of 3D in this bird. The, the colours I'll probably use for the grey will be French ultramarine blue and some burnt amber and keep it quite, quite uh, close in colours and not use too many on my palette. I can see some hints of blue in the beak and maybe some violet in the plumage there. So I'll just introduce those as we go along. So first of all, I'm going to wet the entire inside of the bird with clear water. I'll just zoom back out. I'm wetting it so that it opens up the fibres of the paper. So I've got a size 6 brush just a synthetic brush. I'm wetting everything, including the eyes. This takes a little bit of time, so I'm just going to put the camera on pause while I do that to save you having to watch me do it, but I'm going to wet the whole area, okay? Okay, as you can see, I've wet the bird all over. But he's not running with water. Can you see there's this, just that sort of sheen? Uh, it's damp all over. Okay, and that's, that's what we're after. We don't want it damp where there's no sheen. We just need a little bit of moisture still on the surface. So now I can mix up my colours for the shadow of the body. And I'm going to use some French ultramarine blue and some burnt amber, there's some burnt amber already on there. That's quite a nice shadow colour. And I'm going to put that in. There. And you can let it run up into the chest, because of course that's going to be black anyway. Okay, so I'm just going to tip the board. Just to let that all run and then that obliterates my brush strokes and does lovely soft watercolour things. And the blue and the brown um, separate then a little bit so it gives a nice granulated effect. There's a bit of a gap there. Okay so there's a bit of shadow going there. Okay now I'm going to go for the stronger much stronger uh, black then, much more French ultramarine blue, some more burnt amber, much stronger, much more burnt amber. I want this to be quite viscous, quite gooey, but still with enough moisture in it so that it will flow on the paper. I'm going to add that now. If it goes over the eye, don't worry, we can always pull it back out with a thirsty brush. I'm really pushing the paint into the body. I'm really working it in so that when it, it does separate, it makes a lovely granular a texture. 
So I'm using a size 6 brush again, being very careful of my outline. Okay, the tail, there's a, there's a white patch here, so we'll leave that white and then drag the paint down carefully. And we'll do the tail, more French ultramarine blue, no burnt umber. Very strong dark there. If the colour flares into the white patch there, you can always lift it out with a thirsty brush, but so far it's behaving really well and is staying put. I don't mind a little bit of fusion like that, if I can zoom in. When it fuses, like that, oh, that's a bit fine. That's quite nice, uh, but it's when it flares over too far that it starts breaking up the shape of the, the subject, then you need to pull it back in. So let's have, he's got these little sort of pantaloons on, little black trousers, so I'm going to paint those in black. These, don't forget, have all been moistened already. That's why, again, if I zoom in on the leg, that's why we're getting a nice soft blue where the black joins the white. Everything is flowing nicely and this is what I want at this stage. I want watercolour to do its thing. I'm just flicking out with the tip of my brush some tiny little, you know, feather suggestions there and on the, the, the right hand leg. Just break that shape up so it's not so perfect because he's got scraggy little you know, feathers here and there. And coming down, tapering down into the claws. I love the way his feet are sort of like that and then clawing up back on themselves. This brush is now too big so I'm swapping to a size 3. Just bring all that colour down. Don't forget this is just the first application of colour. We'll be doing more refined details and pulling out more shapes in the next application. So we just want to get the grey black on now while everything is moist so that the, the colour going on is a little bit irregular and not too perfect and not dead. Don't worry if you leave the, leave the odd chink of white paper showing, you know, a few little gaps and irregularities are, are not, nice. Well, I like them anyway. These claws are really sort of twirly and bendy. And this is what interested me when I was drawing the bird was the way his claws were quite um, a feature. So that's what I want to try and capture now. Okay, so there's basically a lot of colour on all over the bird. So what I can do at this stage is just um, make sure that my edges are, are not bleeding too far and they seem all right at this point. And uh, I think at this stage, I'm just looking at the mouth. Inside there is a little hint of, you know, rose madder, a bit of pink. So I'll just pop that in now. I left a tiny little slither of unpainted paper in there. So I just pop the pink in for that little bit of contrast. And it'll bleed with the black so it won't look too out of place. And at that stage, I'm going to stop and let it all dry. Make sure it's bone dry. So for the next part, the bird now is actually bone dry. Okay, it's had a few hours to dry and um, it needs to be totally dry before I put the next layer of paint on. If you start painting when it's only partly dry, when it's still a little bit damp, you'll risk getting back runs. So it's best to let it go really hard and dry. Okay, so we need to start putting some stronger detail around the head and the face now. So what I'm going to do, um, actually I redrew the beak and the eye just to be clear about where I'm going. So if ever you feel you 
you can't really see where you're going, then just re redraw the features of your subject. It's worth it in the long run. So I need some of the stronger mix of the, the black mix again. So that's French ultramarine blue. Sorry, that's glaring there. Okay. French ultramarine blue and burnt umber. So still quite runny, strong enough to be darker than the wash, than the painting now. See, that's dried quite pale. Watercolour always goes a lot paler when it's dry. So as I mentioned at the beginning of this demo, I'm going to add in some little bits of violet, winds of violet now, just to start adding a bit more interest in colour into the plumage. And what I'm going to do with this is paint this darker colour on. I'm going to carefully go around the eye leave space for us to do some detailed work in that in a minute. I'm cutting around the beak because I'm going to leave that paler. The beak will be slightly paler than the head. So this dark wash now is going on wet on dry. already that's putting the beak you know in clear relief now compared to the rest of the, the neck and the head okay so as we come down here um, I'm going to start darkening the left hand side because this is the, the shadow side the light as you can see is coming from the left this is the lightest part on the bird sorry the light is coming from the right so the right hand side is the lightest then as we go over to the left, you can see there's shadow. So that's what I will, I will do. I'll get this extra second wash on and then into it, I'm going to add stronger, a deeper tone. What I want to do is leave some of the previous wash showing through. So I'm not painting it right up to the edge there. Just taper this away very finely. And then again, I'm adding this darker blue-black mix, but I'm leaving some of the previous blue and soft fuzzy, fuzzy edges showing for a bit of contrast in the bird. And I just a broken line there to hook those two areas together. Straight away, I want to add a much stronger blue-black into the left-hand part of the head and the neck. So I need a really uh, thick mix of the blue-black. So French ultramarine blue and burnt umber. And again, let's have a bit of Windsor Violet in there, just for a bit of richness. So the shadow will be here on this left-hand side. So I'm leaving the right-hand side pale. So let's put this really strongly down this side of the black plumage and obviously right under the beak will be really very dark there and as you can see right in front of his eyes a dark patch and then the top cap of his head is lighter so I'm going to put that really strong dark patch in there now And I'm leaving a little few millimetres of the wash showing underneath because I'm going to blend that in softly. I don't want it to go hard right up to the edge of the, of the bird. But what I am going to do now is with a, a size 3 brush, I've moistened it and flicked excess water off. So I'm just going to rotate that just softly, blend that a little bit more, rinse again. See those jagged lines there? I want to soften those in a bit more, so just touch in right at the edge of that black paint and soften it. Similarly, I just want to soften this edge a bit more. If it 
comes back into your white, just press it in with a clean brush and push it back into place. Then I'm going to turn the painting because it's easier for me to work this way for a minute and just soften all of this because the bird would have a halo of light um, around it so I want the, the black to sort of fade away to a greyish hue on this left hand side and I'm just dragging some of that grey out just to sort of give him a, a shoulder there on the left hand side as well. Right, now I need to make sure I can lift out that highlight across his forehead which is sort of straddles both his eyes. So to do that I'm going to wet a quarter inch uh, flat brush then I'm going to dry it on a towel and then I'm going to start lifting I just zoom in a bit more on the head for you. Start lifting some of that, those highlights out. So I'm just wiggling the brush, just dis dislodging some of the previous wash, rinse because your brush will be full of colour. That highlight goes right across to the right hand side of his head. So I'm just lifting it and smoothing backwards across his head. And there's a little highlight by the left hand side of his eye as well. So I'm just going to press in and lift that out. And there's a little curve under his eye there. So lift that up. And then on this side, on the right hand side, I'm just going to lift out some more pink there because there, it's a bit paler there. So I'm just dragging this thirsty brush, rinsing each time, drying each time. and just going in and lifting out some of that black just to pale it off and starts to give some feather texture in the chest, feathers as well. Similarly, if I just zoom out and work on the tail here, there's a little bit of a highlight there. So I'm using this thirsty brush to lift out some of that black there. Rinse again. So that separates this tail feather from the wing feather, you see. Okay. And then the next bit that I want, just want to do is just to keep softening that bit above his, his forehead. Just want to soften that over. So I'm just rubbing very lightly with this clean, thirsty brush to give that illusion of a turn out of the light. So I'm going to use a much smaller brush now just to tidy up that feature. So I'm taking some of that black over there, goes across his beak, tip of his beak, and then up and over his eye like that. Okay, now that's quite a hard line there. So again, with a very small size 3 brush that's just been flicked, it's got a bit of moisture in. I'm going to touch into it and just softly blend and blur that line a tiny degree. And then that makes that curve look a bit more, a bit softer. Okay, and I'm just going to stop there and then do the next part. Right, so we're going to carry on working on the head now. Okay, so for the beak, I'm just going to put a tiny bit of dark grey on the tip of the beak and running along the rim there. Going 
because it's a bit darker on the left hand side this week. And I'm just blending in this dark piece of the face that hooks into the beak a bit more softly. Then I'm going to rinse my brush, flick it, and then with whatever moisture is left, I'm going to soften that little bit of grey I just put in. Just soften it up very delicately into the paler rest of the beak. <clears throat> so that just gives it a bit of a turn, it turns it. Now inside the mouth, we've got a few shadow areas in there, so I'm just using the same colour as I used on that beak. So in there, it gets a little bit darker inside the mouth. And then there's a little bit more rose, um, rose madder. So I'm just going to add some more rose madder. that shape into that area in between the upper beak and the lower beak and just let that blend in. So for the eye I need let's see, a small amount of black again and the black I'm going to use is French ultramarine blue and some burnt umber. That's the black. So for the eye, I'm going to try and paint this quite finely and leave a tiny margin of white, even if it's only a millimetre, in some places. Okay, so that's the main, main body of the eye in there. Now around the eye, there's a pale rim there, then there's a darker one here, so I'm just going to add that now with this darker colour and taper it away to nothing, so you go more lightly, just as you're lifting the brush off the paper. And then again, there's a darker, thicker rim towards the left corner, left uppermost corner, and that comes right over to the right. And that sets the eye in the head. Okay, then under the beak, let's, let's make this a little bit darker because it's a bit too pale. So just putting some detail in the corner of the mouth there. And another slight arc under the left hand part of the eye. Okay, so now the beak looks quite weak compared to the rest of the head, so I am going to use the very dark black uh, colour that I've just used for the eye on the beak rim. And with a small size 3 brush, again, moisten it, flick it, and then whatever moisture is left on that brush would be enough for you to soften that edge back up into the beak. Just one more time. Leave some of it paler because the top right hand part is catching the light coming from the right. I'm just softening this bit of dark under there. Okay, so I think the head is more or less there now. He's got something in his mouth, so I'm just going to pretend that it's a bit of bread. So I'm just going to add a little bit of uh, brown, just some burnt umber to one side of it, to the left hand side of it, um, because the other side would, would be lighter. Okay, so for now, sorry, that's what I've just added to the, to the bread, okay? So for now we need to just carry on with darkening the tail feather. So I'm going to use that strong French ultramarine blue and burnt umber mix again. And let's go really dark now, right up there where he's butting against the white of his body. And then I'm going to use some separate strokes to suggest some 
separate feathers in the underside of this tail. Okay, so, so it's not a solid block of black, if you can see that. There are some ridges, some pale ridges. It doesn't have to be, you know, exact. You just want to suggest a broken passage of black. And this corner here, I'm going to go much darker in there. And then leave the rest unpainted. Now down to his legs. The shadow side is the left hand side. So let's get much stronger black all the way down on these sort of um, little sort of puffy trouser things he's got on. And then slightly darker with a few curves like that sort of the ankles, where then the claws splay out from. So it's going to be darker on this side, on the left hand side. Leave the right hand side as it is, and then just drag a few little curves or arcs over to the right to suggest the scaly nature of his feet. And I'm not going to overdo those because no, they're not the feature. His face is the, the main thing. So again, with a moist brush, I'm just going to moisten and touch into that black. And then it'll bleed. Can you see it bleeding across? Softly to the right-hand side. And just touch in to the edges. The, the, the right hand side, sorry, on the feet. And that will encourage some of the black from the left to bleed across. I just want everything to, to have um, some dif differentiation in tone. So let's go to the right hand leg now. So that's much darker there. So, okay. so some more of this darker black colour. So I'm keeping it mostly to the left hand side, first of all, because I want a soft bleed over to the right in a minute. And on this one, the shadow will be on the underside because it's at a different angle to the others. But again, I'm just suggesting his claws. These are not anatomically correct, really. They're just my sort of interpretation of them, all wiggly. Okay. So again, moist brush. Let's let's soften. This across. So a size three moist brush. Just touch in to it. And let it bleed across so that it's, it's a gradual change and then I'm softening underneath some of the unpainted areas on the feet. Okay, so as I zoom out from that now, he's starting to come alive a little bit more. One final thing that we need to do is to add a speck of um, a speck of gouache. What I like to do is, um, can you see that? See that there? Okay, so I use a bit of gouache with a tiny bit of Windsor Violet in there. So that gives me a, 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 a pale or an opaque, sort of actually mid violet colour. And then what I'll do is zoom in on that view. And then to get the eye to have that uh, shine on it, I'm just going to drag that across in a sort of arc over the top, the top right, uh, the top part of the circle of his eye. Alright, 
and that'll dry a lot paler than it is. Then last of all, um, I'm using the opaque white again, I'm just sticking my brush in the tube and get a little blob of pure white and then just pop that in. That's actually a bit big, a bit too big. So I'm going to rinse that off very quickly. Dry my brush and try and pick off some of that white. It's a bit too much. I'm going to brush it inwards to diminish its effect a little bit more. Nearly there. I don't want to lose it all. Actually, what I'll do is I'll just add some dark right above it. So more of that blue-black, just to sort of kill it a bit there. Okay. Right, so that's brought his eye to life. And then lastly, what you can do is take a tiny bit of that uh, the purpley one we did on the top. And again, a little tiny bit of opaque white gouache. And then go very finely. Around the base of his eye, can you see that? It's going out of focus. Hang on. No, it won't work. Okay, that's as close as I can get. So that is a moisture line in the bird's eye. Okay, and th basically, that's our magpie done. Okay, so if I just zoom out. Okay, so just to recap, um, the colours used were French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, sorry, French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, some Windsor violet, and a little bit of opaque white. You can use Chinese opaque white, watercolour white if you want to. And that's our magpie finished. Okay, thanks for watching.